Hello, YouTube. Recently, an international group of researchers has concluded that seaweed can become the saviors of humanity after a nuclear war. And that's according to a publication in Earth Future magazine. After all, these unpretentious plants are quite capable of providing our body with all the necessary nutrients and trace elements. The authors of the paper considered several catastrophic scenarios for our planet, including the fall of an asteroid, volcanic eruption, and nuclear war. In each of these scenarios, a huge amount of ash will be released into the atmosphere, which will block sunlight and cause a so-called nuclear winter, a global cold snap that will be disastrous for most species of flora and fauna. In the depths of the sea, however, the researchers are confident that even in the conditions of a nuclear winter, sunlight will be enough for photosynthesis and the growth of algae. Computer simulation of a post-apocalyptic scenario for red algae of the species Gracilaria tiquanhia has shown that with the right approach to cultivation, seaweed can meet 45% of global food demand in just nine months if of intensification of production. Um, so the scientists find that seaweed can be grown in tropical oceans even after the nuclear war. And the simulated growth is high enough to allow a scale of up to an equivalent of 45% of the global human food demand spread among food, animal feed, and biofuels in around 9 to 14 months, while only using a small fraction of the global ocean area. The main limiting factor being the speed at which new seaweed farms can be built. The results also show that the growth of seaweed increases with the severity of the nuclear war um, as more nutrients become available due to increased vertical mixing. This means that seaweed has the potential to be a viable, resilient food source for abrupt sunlight reduction scenarios. However, there are more pessimistic forecasts. A number of scientists believe that the global cooling resulting from the nuclear winter will lead to the fact that the seas and oceans will be covered with ice and seaweed will simply die. Well, let's remain more optimistic. Look, seaweed has attracted human attention since ancient times. These amazing plants have long been used in medicine. They're eaten in addition they have unique properties. The ability to maintain the stability of coastal ecosystems and clean up coastal areas of the sea. The sea is fraught with many mysteries, and one of them is the red and green algae, which have passed the longest path of evolution and have unique healing properties. Scientists have calculated that these ancient plants contain several times more vitamins and biologically active substances than all their younger terrestrial counterparts. And the treatment with seaweed resulted in a whole direction, algotherapy. Many types of algae have long been used for food purposes, as well as in traditional and alternative medicine. The population of East Asian countries, China, North Korea, South Korea, and Japan, and the Philippines, have long been regularly eating both wild and cultivated seaweed, Apparently, the interest in, in seaweed as a raw material for the production of um, delicatessen foods or uh, deli foods is due not only to the nutritional factors, but also to the intuitive human need for them for health improvement. So back, for example, in the 13th century, a decree was issued in China obliging all citizens to consume a certain amount of seaweed as a dietary remedy for maintaining health. The unique medicinal properties of brown seaweed are based on their qual equally unique biochemical composition, which can fully cover the needs of the human body for exogenous, biologically active substances, dietary supplements. This is because the human body, whose ancient physiological ancestors came out of the ocean, as many people believe, strives to preserve some homeostatic constants at the subcellular level, blood pH, 
uh, blood electrolyte composition and so on, similar to the composition of seawater. In this case, we're not talking about the quantity of any element, but rather about the ratio of a number of elements. Sea with living in the ocean copies the ratio of elements while accumulating them in quantity. Let's consider the chemical composition of brown seaweed using the example of seaweed saccharina and fucus vesiculosus. Various types of brown seaweed contain carbohydrates up to 70%, lipids about 1 to 3%, proteins 5 to 15%, ash and other substances 20 to 50% of dry weight. The composition of an individual plant depends on the species, season and habitat. Seaweed contains chlorophyll, carotenoids, unsaturated fatty acids, vegetable stearin, trace elements, water-soluble vitamins, amino acids, water-soluble proteins, polysaccharides, and vegetable fibers. The ash of kelp and fucus algae contains many elements, in particular selenium, zinc, copper, and gold. My interest in all things seaweed started back in the Soviet Union in my early youth, like many of my compatriots, especially of my age, I love the books uh, of Alexander Romanovich Belyaev, who was a Soviet Russian writer of science fiction. His works from the 1920s and 1930s made him a highly regarded figure in Soviet science fiction. He was often referred to as Russia's Jules Verne. In 1930, he published his novel Underwater Farmers. I loved the idea of that the book presented. I mean, the plot wasn't anything uh, special, but still interesting. But the idea of, of growing and cultivating seaweeds by humans at the bottom of the sea, so to say, and the ability to do so with special equipment and so forth. But he, he knew that, Belayev, he knew, the author did, that... Uh, Humans will need seaweed to survive. And I think more and more is being consumed around the world. And it, it's a wonderful idea. And uh, I do hope that seaweed will help mankind in the future. And I will bring you more interesting ideas and stories about the oceans, not only paranormal, but also about seaweed and strange animals that are found in the ocean and so forth. So if you like my research, please support me through the links you'll find in the description to this channel. Please tell others about my work and please like my videos. Thank you.